Hi everyone, this is Sharon. In today's video, we are going to have some fun waxing paper. In um, not my last video, I think the one before that, I had quite a few people ask me for a tutorial on how I wax paper. So I thought I'd give that a try today and do a couple different variations that we can check out and see how things work. And um, maybe it'll get you interested in trying some of your own. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the supplies that I use. For the beeswax, I have been using these beeswax pellets the last couple of years, and I really like how they work. They're easy to manipulate. I like them better than the bars that I used to use. Um, these you just sprinkle on the paper. They come in yellow or white. Um, I have the yellow. The yellow gives your paper a little bit more of a vintage kind of yellowy look obviously, and then the wax pellets um, are more neutral in color. These come in a one pound bag. And then on my work surface, I always put down the silicone mat. It's one that you would use for baking. And that just protects my surface. It, the wax tends to sit on that and it works quite well. Under that, I have a piece of freezer paper um, you could probably use any kind of thick paper, even a paper bag. Just I just put it down there to absorb any extra wax that might seep through the mat. And then under that, I'm working on my glass mat just to kind of protect my countertop because it does get quite warm under there. So I have those items. And then I also use a piece of parchment paper that I put between the paper that I'm waxing and my iron. And this I just keep reusing so you'll see it's got some old wax on there and if there's excess on there I just keep using it the next time I'll, I'll pick it up again from that piece of paper. Um, this is the iron that I use. It's a small travel iron that I got on Amazon and I really like it. It's a nice small size and the thing I like the best about it is it doesn't have any steam holds so it's nice and flat and there's nothing that can get gunked up or gunked up or stuck in those holes. So I think that and then just I wanted to talk about the paper that I use. If I know I'm going to wax a piece of paper, I tend to use this tractor feed. It's continuous feed paper. I tore off the little holes on the side. I get this also on Amazon. Um, it's a really nice lightweight paper. It's 16 pound compared to a 20 pound paper you would get with regular copy paper. And the thinner paper um, just allows you to see through it a little bit better when you're done waxing it. So I will link down in my de description um, a link to all of the supplies that I do get on Amazon so that you can find them easily if you're in the hunt for them. So what I thought I would do is first off do some single layer waxing. So I printed off a couple of images, these pretty vases with flowers in them, and I've put uh, printed these on that 16 pound paper and then I tore on the outside so when I'm waxing paper as well you can either cut them with a scissors you can cut them with a paper cutter a lot of times I like to just tear them with a straight edge ruler or with this um, rough edge ruler so this one I tore with my straight edge I just kind of like the little bit of a rough edge that it gives and and you can see after we do our waxing, what that looks like. This is the rough edge. I like to do that before I wax. You can do it after as well, but I think it just works better doing it before. And the other thing I wanted to mention is I print these on a laser jet printer. And the reason I use this wax paper is I found that if I put my iron straight on the paper, which you can do, it works that way too. But if I go over too many times or I rub too much with the iron, it pulls off the toner uh, from the paper. So this helps to keep that on because you're just moving the iron across this paper. Um, I know a lot of people use inkjet printers as opposed to the laser jet. And I thought I would just run a couple of those before the video to see, make sure they turned out okay. And I think I actually prefer the inkjet images waxed over the laser jet. With an inkjet, you have the ink that kind of seeps into the paper and it doesn't remove it when you're waxing over the top of it. As opposed to a laser jet image where the toner kind of sits on the top of the paper and it's it's easier to wipe that off when you're ironing across it. So I 
all of you who have ink jets, I think you're in good shape because I really like the way those turned out. Okay, so let's get started doing some waxing. Now, one thing I wanted to do, um, I've done this before, but I thought I'd do a little experiment today. With images like this that sort of look like oil paintings, I like to crumple them up first and kind of give it that old aged oil painting crackled look. I've done that and I thought I would do one where I crinkle it before we wax and then this one I would crinkle after we do the waxing and just to kind of see and compare how they turn out. So that one I've got crinkled up and this one I'll just leave as is. So let's start out with this one. So I'm going to grab some pellets from my wax bag and just kind of sprinkle them over the top of the image. That's probably enough. And then I'm going to take my parchment paper, just lay that over the top. Now my iron has different settings. I don't take it all the way to the top, the max. I have got it kind of on the high end of the wool setting. And that seems to work best. And I just kind of press down. And you may not be able to see it, but you can kind of see the melted wax seep out the sides of the iron. And then you know that it's melting. And I just kind of move that around to spread it out a little bit. Lift up the paper. That looks pretty good. I usually like to turn it over. You can see some white spots there that I didn't get. And then there's quite a bit of wax on this parchment paper. So I just lay that back down and then re-iron it. Now, depending on if you use a silicone mat or not, um, the one I have has this kind of crosshatch pattern on it. So I don't mind it. It gives it a little bit of texture. And when you pick these off the mat, they're only kind of sticky for a second or two. They dry really fast. That's what that looks like on the crinkled one. It irons it out pretty smooth, but you can see a lot of the crinkles. I, I like that look. So I'm going to set that one aside, and then let's work on this one. Set that down. Before I add any more pellets, I think I'll just try to take off some of the wax that I have on my mat and my parchment paper. There's quite a bit on there yet. And just keep working it. And like I said, I, I don't want to go over it any more times than I have to because I don't want to affect the toner that I have on my paper. But after experimenting with the inkjet ones today, I think I might, if I know well enough ahead of time, I'll just print on my inkjet printer instead of my laser jet. Okay, it looks like maybe I had enough ink on there to finish this one off. Now I'm gonna let this cool and let the wax get nice and hard before I crinkle, because this is the one I wanna crinkle after I wax it. I see there's just a couple white spots. I'm gonna add some extra there. And if you don't have it completely covered, you know, if you have a few spots that are not waxed, that's not a bad look either. Okay, you might be able to see, see that little bit of texture from my mat? Now, if you don't want it on the front side, what I do is um, put the front side up last, go over it, and then it'll get nice and smooth on the front and it'll have the texture on the back. Okay. So the other thing I thought I would experiment with today is the double layering or the melding of two layers together waxing. Now the first time I saw this, it was a tutorial done by Jack Ravi, R-A-V-I, on the Graphics Fairy Premium Membership site. And Jack had has a really nice uh, tutorial out there for this. And it never occurred to me before I saw that to um, put two layers together. 
So what I'm going to do, what I found is um, it works best to wax the two separate pieces. And then what I'm going to do is put them together. And we should be able to see through this image of this pretty lady with some of the text behind it. So let's try that. So I'm going to take some of my pellets, sprinkle them over. over and just do another run on the other side. Make sure it's coated nicely. Okay, so that's our back piece. I'll set that aside to cool off just a bit. And then our lady. You might be able to get her done without adding any pellets. And this beeswax smells really nice. That's another side benefit. <laughs> I've tried putting the two sheets together first and then waxing, and I found that it just works better to get both sides of both sheets coated before trying to put them together. Okay, so let her cool off a little bit. All right, so after we wax, they already are getting a bit translucent, so that helps in determining where you might want to place your bottom layer. And for this one, I thought I'd just let that bottom layer kind of hang over the side, so I cut it a little bit larger than my lady image. And the other thing to think about is I've got both fronts facing the same way, so that when I look from the front, these letters will be the correct way. You could do it this way so you have more visibility of this on the back. It just depends on what you want to do, but then they would be backwards on the front. So there are different things you can do with this. You can um, just leave it as a plain waxed piece, a decorative piece. You can add some writing paper on the back. You can back it with cardstock or um, some scrapbooking paper or decorative paper. Okay, so I'm not going to add any more wax. I'm just going to go over these layers with my iron. And when they dry, they will stick together. Now this little corner is coming up, but I think once it dries, it'll actually pull together. You can kind of see the writing through there. I love the way that looks. Okay, now I just thought I'd try a couple different things. Here's my lady again, and I thought I would give her a little monogram in the bottom. So she looks like an Adeline, so I picked an A. Okay, so let's give her some additional wax. I usually do it at least once on each side and that's normally enough to get it all coated okay and then our little monogram A I'm going to wax that piece pretty good already okay now similar to the other one I want my a coming through the, the front side so I can read it on the front side so I'm going to put both sides up and put this down in this corner something like that 
And when you've got a small piece and a large piece, it works better to turn it upside down and wax it. And having the smaller piece on top, it's just easier to pick them up together. All right, let's try waxing those. one has a surplus of wax. <laughs> My paper is getting saturated. I'm just going to try to maybe remove some of that. Yeah, see, picking that one up, they're not going to stick until I actually put these back together. Let me give it one more pass. Try not to pick up too much extra wax. Okay, well, I think you can see the A through there. We'll let it dry. I think that will, um, it will be more visible once it's dried. Okay, let's try one more of those. Get another lady out. This time I just took some script and I'm gonna put that on the back side, similar to the First one we did, but it's a little bit smaller than this top piece, not larger. It's just fun to play around and try different types of scripts or different layers. And I also use, now these are all printouts, but I've used old book pages as well. I probably should have gotten one of those as an example. Maybe I'll do that instead of this one. I'm going to go grab like an old, I know I've got a dictionary page here. I'll be right back. Okay, I found this dictionary page. It's from a vintage one. And I think I'm just going to maybe rip a corner of this, just so you can kind of see that you can really use any kind of paper or script. Um, it doesn't have to be a printout or a digital. Okay, let's try this one's behind here. So we'll put her aside, we'll wax this piece. Now with old book pages, the only thing is there's no guarantee that this ink will not lift off. I mean, you never know what you might get, but that's the fun of it. I mean, this is not a big expensive item, this book page, so if it doesn't turn out, it doesn't turn out. Okay, so the other thing you get with this is, of course, it's double-sided, so you get all kinds of print on both sides coming through. So now, I think I'll just take my lady and where might we want to put that? Let's put it up so face is covered with the print and we'll just fuse those two together coming through but you can also see the print on this side so with the two-sided book page in this case a dictionary page you get kind of a neat effect on the back side as well okay so let's revisit I want to put a clean sheet of paper over the top <laughs> let's get this one right here be easier to see okay so we have this one with the book page. We have this one with the little A monogram in the corner. We have this one with that alphabet script. And the camera may not be picking up as much as I can see here. Um, 
Then we have this one, which we crinkled ahead of time. Then we have this one, which looks perfectly fine just as it is, but my thought was let's try crinkling this one, give it that aged look after we wax and see if we can compare the two. give it that really old found in an attic oil painting look. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I can see is that unlike this one, it has the white paper, you know, where it's crinkled. You can see that white come through from the paper. We're here, that was there before, but the wax covered it up. So I think my answer to that is to get some ink maybe and just go over those white spots with some ink. That also will give it a little bit of an aged oil painting look. You also tend to get a few more rips and tears this way with the, but that's okay, I don't mind that look either. And it is more, you know, three-dimensional because those crinkles weren't ironed flat. But that just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of the two different looks of doing the crushing before and after. Or like I said, no crushing at all. <laughs> so that's my tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions at all, please leave them down in the comments. I had a lot of fun doing that and I hope you were inspired to do it as well. Thank you. Bye bye.